Hiya gang. It's um it's pretty early in the morning here. It's still dark outside and I'm doing morning prayer, although I appreciate it looks like I'm sort of doing a version of the Bohemian Rhapsody music video. <laughs> um, morning prayer is something I do, try and do every morning, and it's part of what's called my rule of life. Now, rule, a rule of life is something we're going to talk about this week because Mr. Richards just did a brilliant assembly for us about rules and the Ten Commandments. Um, and so we're going to talk about rules of life. Now, rules of life started out with monastic communities, so monks and nuns living over a thousand years ago who came together and thought that the best way to try and live their life was to have a set of rules to live by that would help them be better people and better Christians. And those rules set out when they would pray and when they would work and, and how they would basically treat everyone around them. Um, and so that's why I pray every morning or try to it and, and every night. It's part of my rule of life. Um, and I can show you some of the things here I used to pray actually, look, have a look. So I normally light some candles. Um, this thing over here is an incense burner. So sometimes I'll burn incense and get this lovely kind of sweet smelling smoke, which helps kind of calm my mind and make me feel sort of more spiritual, I suppose. Um, and here, sometimes I have icons or pictures or things to hold. You know, I've got loads of these. Uh, I love finding these pebbles on the beach. You know, you get these uh, pebbles with crosses on them. I like collecting those. Um, so sometimes I'll pray with one of them um, and I always have some sort of prayer book. This is my, probably my favourite prayer book. This is the Celtic prayer book um, and then a Bible. Um, and then, yeah, and then I start. So I try to start every day if I can uh, by kind of sitting for a little while uh, and praying to God and praying for all the people who I know and love. Um, and then uh, same thing in the evening, but I usually do that in bed. Um, so let's have a little look now at kind of rules of life and how monastic tradition, so monks and nuns, and the way they live their life can impact our lives as Christians today. So people first started becoming monks and nuns not long after Jesus. They were Christians who lived in sort of mainly non-Christian towns and cities and found this made it quite difficult to live lives of faith. They wanted to live lives that were closer to God and so they left everything and went out to live in the desert wilderness, to live in lo alone in caves or, or natural shelters. This was sort of following the example of um, saints and prophets in the Bible like John the Baptist and even Jesus himself going out into the wilderness. Um, and because of that we call these early Christian monks and nuns, they're known as the desert mothers and the desert fathers. And, and that's, we call them mothers and fathers in that way because so much of our tradition today comes from, from them, the things that they started and, and they went and lived in the desert and did it. So we call them the desert mothers and the desert fathers. Initially, uh, they lived alone, but as more and more Christians decided to follow their example, they began to group together and form monasteries, um, which were places where they could live and pray and work together. Now, by about 500 years after Jesus, a guy called Benedict of Nursia came along and he decided to sort of write down a rule of life, um, which was sort of like a manual for monks and nuns to live by so that everybody knew that they were doing the same thing. And this was known as the Benedictine Order. Now, this is a rule of life that sets out who's in charge of what and how everyone should behave and what sort of work should be done. And most importantly, for monks and nuns, when to pray, because for monks and nuns, praying for the world, like that's their main job. And for them, the day is divided up into eight times for prayer. So this is for, uh, for a Benedictine monastery. So um, vigil prayer is at about two o'clock in the morning. So the monks would get up at two o'clock in the morning and pray vigil prayer. Matins um, is from about three o'clock in the morning until dawn. And then you have uh, Lords, which is about five o'clock in the morning. Uh, prime, which is uh, about six o'clock in the morning. Terse, which is uh, nine o'clock in the morning. Sext, which is uh, midday prayer at noon. Nons, which is at 3 p.m. Uh, Vespers, which is at sunset, so about 6 p.m. And then Compline, which is any time sort of after 7 p.m., which is the final prayer of the day. So, I mean, so that is lots of praying and, and not very much sleep. You can see while, while in his rule, Benedict actually wrote, uh, it said, the sleepy like to make excuses. Um, and he set out all sorts of rules for monks and nuns in this book to live by. Rules such as um, before all and above all, attention shall be paid to the care of the sick. So they shall be served as if they were Christ themselves. Um, pretty good rule. Um, another one of Benedict's rule is let all guests who arrive be received like Christ. For Christ will say to us, I came as a guest and you received me. 
So that's Benedict um, talking about in the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus says to his followers um, that, you know, whoever, um, how you treat people is how you treat me, basically. Um, and so because of that, monasteries were, were places where people could go uh, in need or if they were sick or especially, um, you know, this was before hotels and towns and things. So if people had to travel on long journeys, they would stay at monasteries because they knew they would get a welcome there. And they knew they would get a welcome at any monastery because all the monasteries followed the same rule of life. And those rules meant that the monks and nuns there had to welcome people in just as they would welcome Christ. And there was even like really practical stuff in there. Uh, one of Benedict's rules is um, sleep clothed. Thus, the monks will always be ready to arise without delay when the signal is given. Each will hasten to arrive at the work of God. So basically, Benedict's saying sleep in your clothes because um, you're going to be getting up and down so much in the night and doing so much work that you don't want to, you know, you don't want to get caught without your robes on. Um, and there's loads of other sort of practical things in there as well. Um, they've got a short video here uh, by English Heritage, which kind of goes into the day in the life of a Cistercian monk. So Cistercian monks were a kind of Benedictine monk. So let's have a look at that video now. When sleep is sweetest, we rise at the bidding of a bell. There is no moment for idleness or self-indulgence. Everywhere peace everywhere serenity and a marvellous freedom from the tumult of the world. Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Sam. We're here at Rebo Abbey. We're here to discover what it was like to live in a medieval monastery. Let's go! Ah! Young pilgrims, my name is Aylred, and I am the abbot of Revo Abbey. Now, I understand that you want to learn something about our way of life. Yeah, correct. I think the best way to learn about what it's like to be a monk is to wear the same sort of clothes that monks wear. Would you like to come and dress as monks? Yes, please. Then follow me. You look very, very smart now in your monk's habits. My name means noble strength. It's Anglo-Saxon. My family come from the north of England, and for many years they've been devoted to the northern saints, especially Saint Cuthbert. What does a monk do? When you become a monk, you leave the world behind with all its riches, possessions, your family, and instead you come to an abbey and you devote your life to the glory of God. What do you eat for breakfast? So we have one meal a day, and that's normally in the middle of the day. And that meal is a sort of, I suppose you'd call it porridge. It's made of bread, which we grind up. Then we add hot water. And then we add whatever vegetables we happen to have, depending on the season. Some herbs and maybe some fish. So what you end up with is a sort of porridge with vegetables and fish in it and that's what we have to sustain us. Why are your robes white? By wearing white, we're wearing the colour that wool is when it comes off a sheep's back. So that makes it the cheapest, so it's a way of showing that we believe very strongly in our vow of poverty. Do you have to be silent all the time? And if you do, how do you communicate? Well, Saint Benedict, whose rule we follow, stresses that silence is very, very important for monks because it stops us gossiping and lets us concentrate instead on God. So we're not allowed to speak at certain times of the day. We have a set of signs that we use to communicate with each other so that people still know what's going on. So see if you can guess what these might be the signs for. Is that like fire? Light, light out, candle. Very good. What about this? Does that mean porridge? Yes, it does. So you see, we can communicate with each other quite easily without the use of words. That's very clever. Thank you. Well, you have done very, very well. You have learned all about the life of a monk in an abbey. But you face one final test, and that is the test of silence. So I challenge you to see who can be silent for longer. So Emily, Sam, face each other. Begin. Uh, 
and everything is peace and everything serenity. Wow, so, I mean, you can see the monks and nuns, like they, it's a pretty strict rule of life, which can seem kind of crazy to us, um, but it did enable them to achieve all sorts of amazing things. I mean, not least a sense of fulfillment, which comes with its incredibly close relationship with God. And because they were all working so hard, monasteries became the center of learning in Europe, with monks and nuns being at the forefront of philosophy, technology, art, literature, science. I mean, they're, they're responsible for writing and illuminating. That's these amazing pictures. Um, all of our ancient texts uh, before the days of printing. So, for instance, the writings of one monk, uh, an English monk called the Venerable Bede, um, they're pretty much our main source of English, ancient English history. Almost everything we know about ancient England comes from that, that one monk's work. Um, whilst uh, a more modern monk, Gregor Mendel, who was a monk in the 19th century, well, he is the father of genetics. He discovered genetic variations in the whole field of genetics um, whilst planting and experimenting with sweet peas in a monastery garden. Another function uh, that um, monasteries served in the past was that like, really many bright and ambitious women became nuns because unfortunately it was the only way they could be taken seriously in, in what was a really, really unfair society. Um, becoming nuns allowed them to sort of work and study and research in ways that they wouldn't have been allowed to do in the outside world. Uh, one of those nuns, um, for instance, was a, a nun called Hildegard von Bingen. She was amazing. She was a mystic, a, a scientist, a historian, a musician, a composer. In fact, the music you can hear in the background while I'm talking in all this, um, that was written by her over a thousand years ago and people are still listening to it and performing it now. So in, in between all the praying and learning, monks and nuns sought to serve the sick and poor in their community at a time when like, no one else would really. Monasteries were at the forefront of early medicine and they all used to keep these large herb gardens so they could grow medicinal plants and tend to the sick and the needy. Um, and because of that, they, they used to grow um, all sorts of sort of herbs and, uh, and spices and they, uh, they brewed beer and they made wine uh, and they produced honey. Uh, like they were just doing everything, really. Um, and the rule of life sort of enabled them to achieve all of these wonderful things working together as a community for God. So, as I said at the beginning, I, I have a less demanding rule of life uh, than full on Benedictines. Uh, and that's because for three years I lived in a sort of a type of monastic community as I trained to become a priest. And over time I learned to respect that rule of life. And I learned to respect it because I saw the difference that it made in me uh, and in those around me. And so I continue with it, I, praying in the morning and the evening or uh, prime and compline as proper monks and nuns would call it. Uh, and putting aside like a small amount of time each day to pray or just to be still and silent or to practice mindfulness or meditation or to think positive thoughts. It's a really, really good practice to get into to make your rule of life, um, especially <clears throat> at times like this when, you know, um, life's a bit crazy at the moment, isn't it? Uh, and it can feel a bit stressful and a bit much. But if you could just take a few minutes a day, you know, it's, it's good to start small and maybe just try doing two minutes once or twice a day of just being silent and reflective. Um, and maybe you can ask your, your brothers or your sisters or, or your grown-ups to do it with you. Just sit comfortably and focus on your breathing. Try to be still. Uh, and do that just for a couple of minutes. And if you want to make that a prayer, well then, hey presto, you're praying. Um, and that's it. So that's, that, that's the, the rule of life um, that monks and nuns stuck to. And it's, it's inspired the rule of life I have. And I hope... Uh, it will inspire some of you to think about um, having some sort of rule of life uh, of prayer and contemplation of your own. So let's say the Lord's Prayer together now. And then uh, I'm going to play you a song about prayer uh, by one of my favourite musicians. And then after that, there'll be a couple of minutes, if you want to, for you to practice this yourselves. OK, so we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God, give me the strength today offer myself to thee from this bondage set me free help me see the nature of my wrongs in your grace I will be strong this old world is full of fear and greed love it is the door faith's the key From this bondage set me free and offer myself to thee. God, with you I can be whole if I surrender my control. Though I still want to run the show But I'm trying to let go This old world is full of fear and greed Love it is the door, faith's the key Nothing is deserved nor guaranteed Not for myself to thee pray for thee for the restless and the wild for the broken tame defiled for all of us who crave more than we need I pray for thee and offer myself to
God bless everyone.